To learn more about Next Level Sound's online music production courses, please visit nextlevelsound.com. So these are all the modules. The frequency spectrum is here. So if we, if we want to look at our track, we can look at the frequency spectrum here uh, of the A track. You look at it and it's very much a personal preference which one makes best sense to you i like personally i like octaves and third of an octaves these are the most helpful for me but whatever you know makes sense for you you do your thing um and then you can do ha change the ballistics of the metering uh different average times hold times attack and release this kind of thing now what hakan is talking about is that what we can do is we can um we can switch between a b with whatever setting we like to see both like this and the meter switch but what is cooler is that we can go to dual display mode and then we can see how our frequency contour spectrum is working compared to the reference track. That is very useful if you're like, how's my low end? Am I do I have too much? Do I have too little? Do I look like Enrico? Do I am I, you know, can I do I walk and talk like Enrico? How am I looking? And this can be very, very helpful. Now, also within the playback and the spectrum modules, we have these filters. And you can select the filter um, and you can just have the solo the mids or the bass or the sub or the low end. And it can give you a sense of like, how's his sub or her sub versus my sub and isolate these frequencies um, as you AB and it's very helpful. So here, here's the base and you can change the crossovers if they don't, if you don't like them. Right. Also very, very, very helpful uh, if you're just curious about certain, you know, uh, sections of your of your frequency range, whether they're too much, too little or how they are. You can check it like that. Um, now, moving right along, we can go to correlation, a correlation meter. I'm going to save that for the for Tuesday and I'm going to go straight to one of the most useful things which is dynamics. Dynamics, um, okay, what is the crest factor? It's sort of, right, it's sort of a peak to loudness ratio. And what it is, is back in the day, it would sort of take the, your peak, your loudest peak moment, and then your average loudness, which was back in the day was RMS, root mean square, which sort of was compressed bass. And it would give you a sense of how compressed or how knocking the music was. And um, this is very, very useful to see if your track is over compressed or, uh, un or, or still very knocking. It's your knock power. Now, when we look at dynamics, it's not an absolute number. It's a relative number. So what we're looking for is high numbers, PSR, exactly, peak to short-term uh, loudness ratio. And this short-term loudness is more accurate than a traditional 
crest factor because a traditional crest factor is using RMS and modern loudness be meters take into account the sensitivity of the human ear and that certain frequency ranges like mid-range uh, make things seem louder than the actual voltage in a l linear way would. If that mean, meant nothing to you, don't worry about it. So, so what we have here, we can, let's go out of dual for a second. Let's go back to single and let's go to Enrico and let's analyze the loudness of the reference track. Uh, the, di the dynamics, rather, not the loudness, the dynamics. So his dynamic reading is sort of like seven and a half. So the, the, the general rule of accepted rule of thumb right now in the industry is that you don't want to dip below seven very much or even eight and if you want your track to be really knocking and punchy when you analyze your track you want to see eights and nines and tens you don't want to see twos or threes or fours Enrico is a seven and a half and that's cool because he probably went for some absolute loudness with the limiting on his track but you don't want to dip much below this. Let's look at our dynamic reading for our work in progress, our A track. Okay, so looking at these numbers, A has the higher number, it's less compressed and it's more knocking. Now look, A is a pre-master. It doesn't have any limiting applied yet. The limiting is going to bring this number down and it's going to need a little bit of limiting as a club track to get to the loudness where DJs can play it. But you want to watch that limiter so that um, as you're making it loud that you don't dip below 8. And, you know, Enrico dips a little below 8 but not by much. And it's quite loud. So this is a genius meter for us. This is a where have you been all my life meter. It's so clear. It's so, it's so easy to read. And what you can do is take a moment, make a nice cup of tea, and take your 10 reference tracks. And I, I hope my sermon this morning uh, made it so clear how important reference tracks are. If you work in one genre, you should have 20 tracks that you love and that make you feel like a kid again, that blow your mind every single time you listen to them. Those are your reference tracks. Those tracks where everything is good. The mixing, the production, the sound design, the mastering, the everything is good. That, that the reason, these are the reasons why you do music, that you get inspired to do music, is these amazing reference tracks. They drew you into this sport because you're like, somehow I got to figure out how to make it sound magic like that, right? So these are your reference tracks. So take your reference tracks, take your metric AB. If you don't own it, download the demo. I don't know how long it runs for, but it runs for a while. And analyze all of your reference tracks. Now, final thing for today. When you're looking at dynamics, this makes the most sense during your drop or your chorus. If you have a long intro that's ambient with sub bass and chords and no drums, um, you're going to get some weird readings on this because there is no knock because there's no drums. So don't, don't, don't worry about how it looks in some of your um, more ambient sections. You know, take those sections where you want the maximum amount of knock, the chorus, the drop, whatever, loop those and get read your dynamics and you're going to start to align your brain and your eyes with that track is banging oh look that track is banging because metric a b dynamics is showing me that and yes the bigger number the more dynamics erica correct to learn more about next level sounds online music production courses please visit nextlevelsound.com